coincidentally, we're, we're, we're doing this segment after Easter. And in many respects, I think there has been a resurrection. Uh, on April 16th, 2018, I will read from the preface of Dennis Miller's new column on Breitbart. The column is entitled, oh. Methinks. And... <laughs> There is a, uh, a preface from senior management at Breitbart. In fact, we know it's from senior management because it is uh, entitled Note from Senior Management. <laughs> and this is italicized, so you know it's true. Nobody had more respect and admiration for Dennis Miller than Andrew Breitbart. I believe that. I believe that, too. I did read that. I, I believe that, that, too. I would say... Nobody had respect and admiration for Dennis Miller other than Andrew Right, and in the sense of like, that guy was super funny. Yes. And everybody's like, okay. He's the only guy in Hollywood who's willing to stick up against those Hollywood elites. And returns my calls. <laughs> right. Okay, one of Andrew's great joys was filling in as a guest host on the Dennis Miller radio show on Westwood One. They were connected. Oh, no. They were connected... <laughs> By humor, insight, and the shared belief that conservative ideas can be advanced through culture. We're excited that things have come full circle, and we welcome Dennis to Breitbart News. <laughs> there we go. What a great, what a great uh, publication this is. And that, you know how they always say, these guys really know how to, uh, how to really appeal to the young people. Note from senior management. Right, That's exactly. How they appeal to young people. This is super <laughs> hip. And so let me just tell you the first uh, piece is entitled Methinks. Dot, dot, dot. Take, down, uh, take, uh, take Trump Ooh. down or pipe down, which Wait, is an interesting uh, sort of. Uh, dude, it's a note from senior management. Apparently, a comedian I never heard of was super admired by another guy that I never heard of. <laughs> exactly. And they're both into racism. <laughs> awesome. We'll fucking snap this. Take Trump down or pipe down. Start impeachment proceedings now. And then, of course, there is the, uh, the, the bop, 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 which is just simply understood. Uh, it's not actually printed. We just, uh, the, bop, the bop, bop, bop is, is implicit. It's, it's implicit. Uh, bop, bop, bop. And, uh, where's, your impeachment, where's your impeachment proceedings now? Um, That's by Edward G. Robinson. And of course, it hits all of the points you would imagine in the um, in the first piece. By... There's a great joke in the first line. There's a great, unbelievable wordplay joke. He says he goes in the second year A.D. Get this after Donald. Mm. Huh? <laughs> now it's weird because actually A.D. Um, that is actually a thing. Well, A.D. is actually a thing, <laughs> but it's after death. Mm. Um, mm. And so Donald has not died yet. It's, he's got a little bit confused, well, but that's wait, what's okay. Is Dennis Miller and Alex Jones both subconsciously wishing that this happens here? It's possible. I mean, it would make it all just go away in a clean way. Uh, but it does take him almost four paragraphs to get to um, Hillary Clinton. So good for him in that instance. Uh, but <laughs> now, Restraint. That's restraint. And not only is he roaring back with me thinks. On Breitbart, pop, pop. he also has come out with the new Miller Minute. And um, blessedly... I West, don't even know about this. Yes, blessedly, um, Westwood One has given us an opportunity to sample. In fact, this one is called Miller Minute Sample One. Listen to this. The Miller Minute with Dennis Miller. I want to talk about tea, sometimes referred to as the dignified breakfast beverage. Whereas coffee shreds into your day like a liquefied Eddie Van Halen guitar solo, a nice cup of tea is far less jarring. Think George Harrison strumming the opening chords to Here Comes the Sun. Sure, sometimes you need the gut punch that only coffee can deliver, but as a man looks forward to his dotage, you realize you can only take so many Jake LaMotta uppercuts before the final bell, which calls for a more calming start to the day. Sipping an English breakfast tea 
Chianti, an Earl Grey, or if you're feeling adventurous, a Darjeeling. Tea drinking is such a refined pastime, our cousins across the pond stop everything midday for slow-brewed, leafy refreshment. And Brits usually don't drop everything, unless there are rumors of new Meghan Markle beach photos. Speaking of the beach, let's not forget iced tea. Is there anything better on a hot day than a tall glass of iced tea? Oh yeah. Lemonade. But how great is it to pour that lemonade into a half a glass of fresh brewed iced tea for a refreshing Arnold Palmer? Try doing that with an iced coffee. And that is the minute. Bop, bop. Oh my god. Uh, it's like an angry Larry King. Angry Larry King is back. Uh, I don't even. I mean, seriously, guys. Do yourself bop, a favor. Bop. Do yourself a favor, Michael, and try some tea. <laughs> I don't even. Oh, I, don't, I wasn't prepared for that. Milwaukee, we should Milwaukee have listened to that beforehand. I, I, am, I am like I was speechless during the. Wait, he's doing the. I've now, got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use my best. I'm gonna boil down all my tea material to just one minute, and I'm gonna lay it all in there. I'm gonna concentrate this baby. We're gonna sell it. Uh, uh, wow. Um, the Darjeeling. Bill- remember, Darjeeling. Darjeeling was the punchline of that. Yeah, you got to say, there. but you have to say it. Darjeeling. <laughs> well, the bit where he talks about how every single day they stop everything they do to, for a bit of tea, and then, but usually they don't stop everything they do except for nudes of Meghan Markle or whatever they were saying. What does that mean? I didn't even understand that one. Uh, uh, what is that? Explain Who, that to me. Who's Meghan Markle? She's... I think I know, but. Who is she? She's Prince Harry's, I think, fiance. You know who Meghan Markle is, you fucking Stugatz. You, you know what? money on the big. <laughs> <laughs> you know this what? This guy's saying he doesn't know who fucking okay, Meghan yeah. Markle she's, is. She's, uh, um, I guess she is Prince Harry's uh, boyfriend, uh, girlfriend. <laughs> and <laughs> Get to your but, smart news app, dude. No, but here's the thing. Oh, I do know her. I do know her. She's marrying Prince Harry. Yes. Right? That you know why that, is that was, what you just said? Yeah, you know why that was do, so yeah. um, sort of jarring is that that is a reference to something that is not forty years old. Uh, everything else in there, <laughs> like Jake LaMotta was a boxer featured in a movie that was thirty Raging years Ball. after after Jake LaMotta was a boxer, which was forty years ago. I think Raging Bull, right? That was like in the eighties. Um, no, that yeah, that was like I think it might have even been seventy nine. That's a pretty old movie. Really? Is it that old? Raging Bull. I mean, maybe eighty. Now but Eddie Van Halen, eighty on the dot, yeah. ripping through <laughs> a guitar solo. I mean, we heard that at least twenty five years ago. Um, and uh, then who else did he reference in there? Jake Lamada. Oh, George Harrison. Uh, <laughs> yes. Oh, that yeah. That's opening why. strum. Opening strum of. Uh... Uh, here comes the sun. That's what the Meghan Markle really threw you off because you could actually search Google and get a hit within the past 24 hours. Never mind like the past four or five years. Um, let's go, if you can, to Miller Minute Sample but 2. But there's this wait, weird thing. Wait, do you want to guess what the topic is going to be for Sample 2? Seward's Folly? Is it Seward's Folly? Is that what uh, the topic? Uh, Nancy Pelosi is dumb as illustrated through the original Batman series. I think it's going to be something more cultural because if he's starting with tea, the next thing's no, going to be like... No, he's ramping up. It's going to be like, like I would say... A college campuses? Airplanes. Yeah, college campuses. Airpl- airplanes or problems with cars. My vote is college campus. <laughs> The Miller Minute with Dennis Miller. I want to talk about movie theaters. In a lot of ways, the movie-going experience has been so vastly improved in recent years, it's hard to complain about ticket prices that have bloomed like, well, like Leonardo DiCaprio's salary. There's something to be said for choosing a luxurious (laughs) reclining seat. Pause it. Pause it. So ticket prices have gone up like Leno DiCaprio's... uh, Payments have gone up. It's more of a causal relationship than a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying more for tickets and Depp's making more money. Things bop, have gotten expensive. Bop, bop. Like things have gotten expensive around here. Ba ba ba. Go ahead. No, hey, no, no, I no, no, no. to get a piece of gum? I want to say, to be fair, we don't know if these things were written or just completely off the cuff, like he was walking down the street. So we don't know how much time went into these. Yeah, you can't tell. It doesn't <laughs> sound written at all, right? 
ticket prices that have ballooned like, well, like Leonardo DiCaprio's salary. There's something to be said for choosing a luxurious reclining seat before leaving home and then being offered gluten-free, free-range chicken sliders, yet I can't help but be nostalgic for the days where you forked over a 10-spot for the broken seat on the end of the aisle, popcorn that tasted indistinguishable from Pause the it for one second. Are you also going to say, like, I love how the straw man here... There are probably uh, a dozen theaters in the country where you could go and order food there. And they are only in, like, the places that Dennis Miller frequents. Well, that's the but art of Dennis Miller. Yes. He's just like, I'm a middle America kind of normal guy. And like my other brothers who just have a hard day's work, I'm so tired of organic gluten-free sliders at the theater and lesbians <laughs> holding hands in front of me and transgender people at your favorite coffee shops, independent bookstores, and high-end c- car dealerships. Just like the average guy in Priori. I'm like the average guy who just has gone through his day being annoyed with everything that he does in Malibu. <laughs> yeah, like, popcorn that tasted he in the... Be- he has a great Juju Bees chuck about uh, the movie. Here it comes. Chuckles. Here it comes. End spot for the broken seat on the end of the aisle, popcorn that tasted indistinguishable from the cardboard it was served in, and a box of Junior Mints from the Mesozoic era. Not to mention your feet stuck to the floor for no extra charge. The one way the movie-going experience hasn't improved is the movies themselves. There's a direct correlation between your ability to recline and the decline in the quality of what's on the screen. The worse the movies, the nicer the theaters. We're one fast and furious away from movies projected directly onto the ceilings of individual private movie pods like those hotels in japan when that happens just stay home and that's the minute i'm dennis miller i like it when it becomes like the japs you just stay home there see well like those private pods that none of you have experienced yeah i like except for me no maybe even (laughs) not him stuck in those pods again and malibu maybe not even him he went from like a malibu film experience to like oh you mean like some IMAX theater in Kyoto that even you haven't been to? Right. Yeah. Or Way maybe... Way to really reflect on the frustrations of the white worker. Here, all right. So let's... Uh, what's this next one is going to be? Shouldn't he be doing private jet... Pri- shouldn't he be doing bits about... Wait, uh, there's going to be a plane thing like... Riding the private jet. Yeah, like, how, how, that, what's going on here with this whole thing where you don't even have to go through customs uh, on your private jet and then they, uh, the, the one stewardess comes down there and you're alone and you... You, you can't touch you. Billy's it's... masseuse on a private jet anymore. <laughs> Let's just get to the point. <laughs> All right. My guess again is college campuses. I'm Mom? going double or nothing. He hasn't done planes or uh, cars. What is it? He's stayed sort of apolitical. It's got to get Yo, political. It's totally apolitical. It's it is apolitical. Oh, yeah. No, I think this is going to be. No, like, the movie theater's total subtext uh, is political. Or, or, or it's going to be complaining about the music. Here we go. <laughs> the Miller Minute with Dennis Miller. Want to talk about onion rings? The red-headed stepchild of side dishes, lacking the cachet of french fries or the regional popularity of hush puppies, somehow the onion ring still sneaks its way onto every menu. The fact that onion rings have any degree of popularity is miraculous when you consider the lack of culinary value in the onion itself. Sure, you might slice one up to add to your burger or an occasional french onion soup, but has anyone in human history found themselves with a hunger that can only be satiated by a bulbous albino tear inducing onion the fact that anyone ah, ever it. consciously orders <laughs> onion rings has nothing to do with the onion itself but rather a testament to the me. superiority of Lay frying down. as a food preparation i know face. health nuts don't put much stock in the deep fryer but we always come back to deep fry a process that so improves the taste of food well it might even make vegan food palatable Oh my that's God. Like <laughs> onion rings. Oh my God! All right, can I say this? Careful, this is terrible. careful, Dennis. Careful. I'm I'm missing. I'm where is where is the pro Iraq invasion xenophobia? Because this is really boring. <laughs> I know it's unbelievable. I'm gonna. You know what? No. I'm gonna take on onions today. Boom. My favorite. My favorite line was the occasional French onion soup. <laughs> the occasional. <laughs> Onions, onions rarely make them their way into anything that's cooked. That's um, except I mean, for the occasional French <laughs> onion soup. And do you notice how his <laughs> his homage to his like Bill O'Reilly audience is always? It's just like it's like movie theaters where the the queers go and <laughs> vegan foods bland. Yeah, like right. that's how he's trying to keep them looped in. Actually, almost everything fried uh, is like a, a vegetable, like in that respect. Like yeah. French fries, right. the uh, onion rings. 
And the old, like... Just, back off on the Crisco. Back off on the Crisco, choo-choo. All right, listen. We're only going to play one more of these because we want the other uh, three samples because maybe there'll be more samples that come in the future, but we need to... Uh, we need to make sure that we like save those other three samples. All right, we got to maybe download those even. <laughs> all right, so the final Dennis Miller sample of the day. Um, I'm going to just extend my guess. Trains, car? No, planes, cars. Oh, it could be trains, but I don't think he ever no, has a chance to get on a train, a train so guy. he wouldn't. Ever, it's either planes, cars. And wait, did I say last time vegetables? No, I didn't. I'm actually going to go out of the box here. I'm going to say some type of like uh, kids crying in public places and oh, that's a good one. Thing. That's I'm guessing good sports. One. Yeah, sports could be one. I feel like it also could be something that he gets from a retail store that he doesn't like, like a bag. Like I'm sick of these bags with handles or something. Right, like. right. I'm going to say Uber. Uber. Hey, look, shot shot paper. Dude, plastic. Uber was Why did you stick it in the back of ping bull back? Yeah, got all these ride sharing. What about? Yeah, he could do like what you know, like these. I don't know if there was an Uber of the 1990s, maybe. But I'm gig, saying Uber is way too right. recent for a reference. gig economy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here we go. The Miller Minute with Dennis Miller. I want to talk about Toys R Us. The retail giant has announced they will close or sell all of their stores, laying off thousands of employees in the process. This has led to countless reports that this reinforces how difficult it is for specialized stores to operate in the age of online retail and the proliferation of so-called big box stores like Walmart and Costco. But when you click past the headline, you realize the toy giant was nearly $5 billion in debt. Pause and I don't care what you... Pause it one second. He didn't write this one. That's what, exactly what I'm thinking. He, there's no way that he wrote any of these. This, is, no, the Ronald this, Ra- this not, is the Ronald Reagan one where it's a, paid for by a corporation that's honestly, secretly underwriting me. Bop, bop, bop. This is different from the other ones. You, I mean, you can yeah. hear just one the One of these is, is not super- like the other. Darjeeling tea, blah, 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 versus like, now, well, actually, if you really look at it, Toys R Us needed to pay back their creditors. Well, if, here's, here's the question. Here's work. the question. He has set it up that they're, they're larded up with debt. Now, the story of, of Toys R Us is actually like a, a very, very uh, telling story of, of the financialization uh, of our economy where uh, the, it was a leverage buyout where you have basically hedge funders come in, they borrow money to buy Toys R Us. Then they transfer, essentially, that debt to Toys R Us. And they, as individuals, just get paid out in fees uh, as either uh, corporate executives, board members, or just the fees for basically buy, doing the transaction. And then Toys R Us is saddled with this enormous amount of debt that was taken right. out for these guys just to buy it. This is a leverage buyout. This is what has destroyed many companies around the, uh, the country. Toys R Us actually uh, accounted for something like 20% of all toy sales in the country. It could have existed. 33,000 people laid off. Where do you think he's going with this? Listening to Sam Cedar explain the Toys R Us room is like Rain Man in the Bon Bon room in the 19th. <laughs> he could be. He could be actually criticizing. He could be going there. No, it's not going to happen. He could be. Right, right. He that could would be. be a good take. No let's way. See, let's see. No way. Let's see. Retail and the proliferation of so-called big box stores like Walmart and Costco. But when you click past the headline, you realize the toy giant was nearly $5 billion in debt. And I don't care what you're selling. At some point, when you're that far in the red, there's no amount of tickle me in space Elmos that can take your business into the future. Uh, uh. It's time to grow up. There will be no more Toys R Us kids. Personally, I think that they were done in by their disregard for the English language. The backwards R always struck me as irresponsible when your core customers are young children. But also the grammatical error in the name of the store, which should have always been We Are Toys. And that is The Minute. I'm Dennis Miller. Oh. Wow. He thinks saying Elmo in space is updating the Elmo reference. Now, I, now the guy you. who wrote that one, I mean, this was like, you know, the first three were by the same writer, it seems to me. That fourth yeah. one, it was Dennis Miller like, I'm going to do something a little bit hard hitting. I mean, must like that idea of like fiscal discipline, but boy. He went down that road about if you click past the headlines, 
Then you just see one number, and then we just go back to making fun of the grammatical error involved in the in the name. If you click past the headlines, you'll see the we first told, stat that every lead graph on that right? story used. Right. <laughs> there wasn't a single story on Toys R Us that didn't begin with its losses. Right. Like, if, if you click yeah, real past, real dig work there. If you yeah. click past the headline, you'll see the sub uh, headline, yeah, yeah, right. which says how much they were in debt. <laughs> <laughs> he never said he doesn't say click past the headline that's how you know he doesn't he, he right. didn't write it yeah, he click. doesn't even know what click means no the first half is somebody else the second half where it's like the spelling's weird see that's him